The dragon didn't try to pursue. He hissed and stomped the ground. But I guess he was well trained to guard that tree. He wasn't going to be lured off, even by the tasty prospect of eating some heroes. We ran up the mountain as the Hesperides resumed their song in the shadows behind us. The music didn't sound so beautiful to me now, more like the soundtrack for a funeral. At the top of the mountain were ruins, blocks of black granite and marble as big as houses, broken columns, statues of bronze that looked as though they'd been half melted. The ruins of Mount Othrys, Thalia whispered in awe. Yes, Zoe said. It was not here before. This is bad. Uh, what's Mount Othrys? I asked, feeling like a fool as usual. The mountain fortress of the Titans, Zoe said. In the first war, Olympus and Othrys were the two rival capitals of the world. Othrys was... She winced and held her side. You're hurt, I said. Let me see. No, it's nothing. I was saying, in the first war, Othrys was blasted to pieces. But how is it here? Thalia looked around cautiously as we picked our way through the rubble, past the blocks of marble and broken archways. It moves the same way Olympus moves. It always exists on the edges of civilization, but the fact that it's here, on this mountain, it's not good. Why? This is Atlas's mountain, Zoe said, where he holds... She froze. Her voice was ragged with despair. Where he holds up the sky. We had reached the summit. A few yards ahead of us, gray clouds swirled in a heavy vortex, making a funnel cloud that almost touched the mountaintop, but instead rested on the shoulders of a twelve-year-old girl with auburn hair and a tattery silver dress. Artemis. Her legs bound to the rock with celestial bronze chains. That's what I had seen in my dream. It hadn't been the cavern roof that Artemis was forced to hold up. It was the roof of the world. My lady! Zoe rushed forward, but Artemis said, Stop! It's a trap. You must leave now. Her voice was strained. She was drenched in sweat. I had never seen a goddess in pain before, but the weight of the sky was clearly too much for Artemis. Zoe was crying. She ran forward despite Artemis' protests and tugged at the chains. A booming voice spoke up behind us. Ah, how touching. We turned. The general was standing there in his brown silk suit. At his side were Luke and a half dozen Dracani bearing the golden sarcophagus of Kronos. Annabeth stood at Luke's side. She had her hands cuffed behind her back, a gag in her mouth, and Luke was holding the point of a sword at her throat. I met her eyes, trying to ask her a thousand questions. There was just one message she was sending me, though. Run. Luke! Thalia snarled. Let her go! Luke's smile was weak and pale. He looked even worse than he had three days ago in D.C. That's the general's decision, Thalia, but it's good to see you again. Thalia spat at him. The general chuckled. So much for old friends. And you, Zoe? It's been a long time. How's my little traitor? I will enjoy killing you. Do not respond, Artemis groaned. Do not challenge him. Wait a second, I said. You're Atlas? The general glared at me. So, even the stupidest of heroes can figure something out. Yes, I'm Atlas, the general of the Titans and terror of the gods. Congratulations. I will kill you presently, as soon as I deal with this wretched girl. You're not going to hurt Zoe, I said. I won't let you. The general sneered. You have no right to interfere, little hero. This is a family matter. I frowned. A family matter? Yes, Zoe said bleakly. Atlas is my father. Chapter 17 I put on a few million extra pounds. The horrible thing was, I could see the family resemblance. Atlas had the same regal expression as Zoe, the same cold, proud look in his eyes that Zoe sometimes got when she was mad, though on him it looked a thousand times more evil. He was all the things I'd originally disliked about Zoe, with none of the good I'd come to appreciate. Let Artemis go, Zoe demanded. Atlas walked closer to the chain goddess. Perhaps you'd like to take the sky for her then. Be my guest. Zoe opened her mouth to speak, but Artemis said, No, do not offer, Zoe. I forbid you. Atlas smirked. He knelt next to Artemis and tried to touch her face, but the goddess bit at him, almost taking off his fingers.